-hmm. What are addictions? <laughs> Well, addictions are the result of suppressing emotions inside the soul, such as fear or painful emotions, such as grief, that uh, in an attempt to do so, we have to create a whole other group of emotions that, are, that we call desires, uh -huh. that are, help us to deny, suppress, resist, or substitute mm -hmm. for painful emotional experiences. And and so addictions are inside of the soul yeah. and they are created by, a, a, they're basically desires that are created by the suppression of certain fears. Gotcha. In particular fears, but it could also be the suppression of other types of emotions such as grief. Or shame. Or shame or other yeah. kinds of emotions. So, so addictions are very, very powerful tools to avoid painful emotions. Mm. And as such, most people find, have a huge struggle giving them up yeah and particularly giving them up if they're emotional but even if they're physical addictions giving them up is often very very difficult okay so let's talk about that because you in your let's talk about the types of addictions the yeah. types of addictions yeah. yeah um and in your preamble there you basically just said that uh they're all emotional really they are all emotional yeah well they're they're generated by this by the desire to suppress certain emotions okay is probably more accurate yeah so then addictions can take different forms but they're all generated by an emotional desire to suppress, suppress. fear or and other. deny or resist or or substitute gotcha. put something in lieu of yeah great you know sometimes it's easier to suppress an emotion by having another one instead yes <laughs> for example so let's talk about that there's three main forms of addiction yes and the first being emotional. Of course. So, so, so emotional is where we're using an emotion mm -hmm. that has to come from either within us or outside of us. Yep. And usually it comes from outside of us because it doesn't exist within us. Yep. So usually it's an emotion we expect someone in our environment to give us yep. in order to suppress or deny or resist replace or a, replace yeah. a negative painful feeling that we have inside of us. Okay. So, you know, we could come up with probably examples there of what, you know, of what uh, are such emotions. So, for example, between a husband and wife, there could be very many emotional addictions, couldn't there? Like, if I don't want to feel lonely or unwanted or alone or, or unsafe un unattractive or unsafe yes. i could want my husband to supply all, all of those, of those emotions things. to me that would be emotional addiction and you'll think have. you're in love with him when he does yes <laughs> feel super <laughs> you attracted feel super attracted to him because yeah. he supplies your addiction of your you know safety he supplies mm -hmm. your addiction to make yourself feel good about yourself he yeah. supplies your and because he's supplying all of these addictions You'll just think you're head over heels in love with him when reality is it's all codependent addiction. Yeah, because you know what happens? <laughs> when you're near that person, suddenly all these things that you're trying so hard, to, you have the active desire to suppress, yeah. suddenly in the presence of that person, they, you don't feel that... Um, them that, anymore. You don't feel them anymore. And they're you find it really, it. really easy to suppress yeah, when you're with them. They're easy to suppress, so you think, this is great being with this person, this must this be love. This is love. Yeah. This is love. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not. It's just an emotional codependent addiction. And obviously the other person usually has to be getting something out of it as well. You're probably giving something to them emotionally. Of course. Yes. Of course. They, you know, yeah. they're probably getting something in return for supplying these particular emotions to you. Otherwise, they probably wouldn't be in the relationship with you yeah. unless they believe that that's all they're worth, which of course many people do yeah. because of how they've been treated when they're young. Yeah. So, so so you have two groups of people generally created in these emotional codependent addictions. There's one group of addictions who are, uh, of people who I'd call the abuser of the addiction, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's the other one who's called the supplier of the addiction. Yeah. The abuser of the addiction generally is the person who demands the addiction be met, and the supplier and feels like they have a just right to expect that addiction to be met. Mm -hmm. And the supplier of the addiction generally feels that they should meet that addiction and that's the loving thing to do. That's how they obtain their worth. That's how they obtain their worth. In yeah. other words, they have low worth yeah. and they give their worth 
they get their worth by supplying the addiction to the abuser. Yes, yeah. gotcha. And when I say abuser, I, I'm referring to almost all marriage relationships on this planet at the moment are generally have one abuser and one supplier. Mm. Um, and most of them think they're in love. <laughs> <laughs> At least initially. At least initially. Um. <laughs> of course, because it's impure emotion and out of harmony with God's love and truth, eventually it creates pain. So yes. after a while, they don't believe they're in love anymore. <laughs> yeah, but, but oftentimes the pull of the emotional addiction is so strong that they don't remove themselves from that relationship or they seek another one. That was That's supply. identical. Yes. yes. So they'll go from one relationship to another relationship to another relationship. That's identical. Or you find people making swaps to opposites. Mm -hmm. So in other words, they were abused in one relationship. Yep. So they were the abuser in one relationship. So they got very angry about the abuse that occurred in that relationship. And so with the next relationship, they become the abuser yes. of the relationship. Yep. In other words, they have all the demands and the expectations and the other person must fulfill them. And is it possible for an for a couple to be in the situation where one is the abuser in one area and and the other is the abuser in the, another area? Yes, definitely. Yep. Yep. It depends completely upon the emotional experience of both of them when they were children. Yep. So it doesn't mean that... So And usually that's in practice what happens. So mm -hmm. one abuses in one area, one abuses in the other, and they, you know, they make allowances. Yes. Uh, they, you know, they're told to, in marriage counselling, to yeah. compromise with each other yeah. on these issues. So they make allowances for each other's abuse yeah. and the other makes allowances for each, each other the times someone's given them some love. Yes. And of course they think that's a loving relationship and it's not. Yeah. Of course a loving relationship. It's a codependent relationship mm -hmm. primarily, but the majority of people are in them. To me, uh, it's, and I can I say, go ahead. The main reason why they're in them is because they meet their addictions or the majority of their addictions, and and the reality is, if somebody meets none of your addictions, it's highly likely you don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we are a person who's humble to some of these emotions yes. of fear, shame, grief, yes. then, and that's what I found from this example we we're talking about, is that we're so driven by addiction in our life that mm. it's basically the primary thing we're seeking unless we're humble to some of those other emotions Correct. and entire relationships marriages families professions it's all based on Correct. the avoidance of these these feelings yes. and it's an epidemic it's an a epi global yeah. epidemic it's the worst epidemic it's worse than any disease yes worse because yeah. it creates most diseases as well by the way yeah. So it's worse than any disease. Yeah. And, and like this is one reason too why I, I'm probably one of the least like people <laughs> is because, yeah. when, because I don't feed people's addictions very much at all, if at all. Yeah. The majority of people don't feel comfortable when they're around me. Yeah. Even though I'm being loving to them and truthful with them, they don't feel comfortable around me because I'm not feeding what they define as addiction. As they, well, sorry, they define as love. Yeah. But it's just love masquerading. Yes. Like it's just addiction masquerading as love. Yes. That's all it is. Yeah. And uh, it is one of the main reasons, uh, one of the main you know, ways we manage to avoid darker and more painful emotions. Mm. Hence the desire for it is so being so strong. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so emotional, the emotional way is the first way. And that's seemingly the, the biggest a lot of addictions on the planet, would you say? Well, I don't know. I, you know, if you look at the uh, how addictions are, when you look at the three in yeah, the list, maybe in the end, that. you probably would have to say that they're all pretty much well <laughs> and extensively used by the majority of people. Yeah. But I think the emotional ones are sometimes the more difficult ones to see. They're sort of insidious, aren't And they're they? insidious and they have less judgment attached to them. Yeah. And what I mean by that is that many times the physical addictions have some judgments attached to them. Whereas the emotional addictions don't have any judgments attached to them. In fact, we judge them as loving and nice. Mm. Uh, in fact, they are supported in society most of the time. And because of that, uh, unravelling emotional addictions are the, is one of the most difficult undertakings that a person will ever need to undertake mm -hmm. in their relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Because God is always wanting you to unravel all of your emotional addictions. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> obviously God wants to help you to get what's underneath them, which are all your fears and, and the painful emotions that you need to experience that will heal you. 
So God's created a whole law system in the universe towards the human soul, triggering the fact that when you follow your addictions, you're going to have a more painful life. And this is why most people follow their addictions and eventually see the pain from following their addictions. And then they stop following that addiction only to substitute with another mm. and then follow that addiction. And, and unless we are very sincere, we will never get to the real cause of most of our emotional addictions. Yeah. 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 We have to be very sincere to get there. Yeah. And that's great. Yeah. Because with God, everything has to be very sincere. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It, it requires deep honesty mm. and wouldn't you want to know yourself that well? Yes. And wouldn't God want you to know yourself that yes. well? So it requires a huge amount of exercise of your will to actually get to the state where you really do want to know what your addictions are mm -hmm. because those emotional addictions are covering over all the things that can heal you if you experience them. Yeah. So, so you definitely want to get there. And this is one reason also why most, if not all, uh, processes that people have for their emotions don't work mm. because the majority of them work around the addiction so the addiction remains in play and while the addiction remains in play you will never feel the true causal emotion yeah. so so of course most of these techniques that people have to get to their emotions actually do not work yeah. Yeah. unless you have a sincere desire to face your real addictions and firstly this first group the emotional ones are the most difficult to face probably because they are the most insidious and you you are going to very much struggle in your relationship with god or even your relationship with yourself mm. or your relationship with anyone else mm -hmm. because you're not going to be real while you have those addictions yeah okay mm -hmm. let's go on to the next group so what's the next group <laughs> well well uh, i'll outline or let you know the next two so that yes. we've, firstly we've discussed emotional addiction. so we've first focused on the emotions yep Yep. Then we have physical addictions and substance addictions. Yes, so, so let's separate the yeah, two of those. Yeah. I've separated these two on purpose because physical addictions are not always substances. Yes. They can be situations mm -hmm. that create your comfort. Yep. So for example, you know, a lot of people when they've been had a hard day's work, the first thing they need is to go home and sit in front of the telly. Yeah. Right? So it's no longer, it's not a substance they're abusing there, but rather a situation that makes them feel comfortable to help them to avoid, help them avoid yeah. the stuff that's triggered them during the day. Mm -hmm. And that's an addiction. It creates an addiction. This is why video games, TV, you know, situa situations where you want to go down the beach all the time or you've got to jog every morning or, yes. you know, things that you've got to do every day yeah. are all an indication of physical ways that you're using to avoid specific things. And so they, therefore they are physical addictions. Yeah. 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 And these physical addictions can also be quite insidious because the majority of them are not frowned upon by society. No. So society accepts them. Heck, most of society <laughs> is engaged in exactly. a vast number of them. And in fact, society's <laughs> whole businesses are created <laughs> yes. for them in yes. society. That's the reality. So, yeah. so physical addictions are just as insidious a lot of mm -hmm. times as emotional addictions because most of the time we believe we like them, but we have no idea why we like them. And we feel that the imperative to have them, even though we've got no idea why there's such an imperative to have them. Yeah. And, and they're usually a very, very strong. As soon as they are taken away from us, these particular things, these circumstances. So if we come home and the television's broke. Yes. Then the average person reverts to rage. Yes. And there's the indication of the addiction. Yes. Uh, they get angry. Yeah. Every time you get angry, you're indicating the addictions in play, what it is. Yeah. And so we have a way of measuring your addiction. Yes. Through anger. And we'll talk about anger later. Yeah. But... The physical addictions I find interesting because they are, again, another set of addictions that are generally accepted, acceptable to society. Yeah. Most people in society are completely unaware of how they're using them in an addictive way to suppress emotion. Mm -hmm. And also they have, are unaware of the dangers of, that these particular addictions cause. Mm -hmm. And then the opposite swing of society is some society do see these particular addictions and so they create a whole heap of laws like you shouldn't watch telly or you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that, you know. 
they create oh, what, so some religions for example start oh, creating laws of what should and shouldn't be done yes and they become very strict about what needs to yes. be done with with physical addictions because they see them as addictions yeah. but but they're afraid of them still yes so so mm -hmm. instead of instead of uh, acknowledging that you could use it and it's an exercise of your will they take away your right to use it they try to decline you access to your own will yes mm. and inherent in that though is the assumption that every part or every use of that physical activity or situation or event is addictive and yes. that's not necessarily the case either definitely is it? not in fact you can use many of these physical things as completely the opposite yes you can actually and the same applies to your emotions of course yeah. you can use them in the completely opposite circumstance and actually find the addiction you have yeah. and find the fear that is underneath yes. them by by engaging in some activities with a different exercise of your will and and also the the um, desire driving that activity might not be to suppress it might be as you said to find the the addiction correct but also it might be just that we feel like going for a walk is a good thing to do for our body. We don't feel compelled to do it through the desire to control Correct. our body or suppress our emotion. Correct. We just feel like uh, it's a healthy thing to do. I'm going yeah. to go and do it. Yeah, the key yeah. is if you take away the physical act, mm -hmm. what does the person do? Yeah. If they get angry, annoyed, upset, in, in fact, from slight annoyance onwards, mm -hmm. they are in addiction with it. Yeah. And, uh, and so that's the measure of whether the addiction's in play or not. That's, yeah. Yeah, it's a very good thing yeah. to point out. Yeah. yeah. Now, that was the second one, that, so that's so physical. physical and we've separated that from substances, yep. for, I think for fairly obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. Substances are addictions that you can get met um, through the imbibing of yep. certain things that make the addiction seem to disappear. So they make, make the, the emotions. underlying emotions yes. seem to disappear, sorry. Yep. Now, this is like substance abuses, if you like. So mm -hmm. alcohol, drugs, but they could also be substances that, again, society doesn't seem to have much of an issue with, like food, for example. Yes. Or, or coffee. Coffee or those, tea or those yeah. kind of substances where, that seemingly very innocent and yet they're being used heavily to suppress fear-based emotions. Mm -hmm from being felt. Mm -hmm. So these substances, we could break the substances area into two areas, societal accept, society accepted yes. and society unaccepted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the society accepted are ones that generally the most of us use <laughs> and feel quite comfortable using and have plenty of justification to use um, in our own internal feelings. Yeah. And then there's the society unaccepted. Mm. And that is the uh, ones that generally are acknowledged of causing the rest of society a lot more damage than the average addiction. Yeah. <laughs> and this is where drugs fall into that category, for example, yeah. and alcohol abuse falls into that category. Mm -hmm. so, so a person's allowed to be addicted to alcohol as long as they don't get drunk all the time and it affects everybody else. Yes, affect everyone else. So in other yeah. words, they're allowed an addiction to a certain point Mm -hmm. But once the addiction goes beyond that point and turns into where we can't really carry on our life in a self-determined manner yes. from the judgment of society's perspective, yeah. then of course it's now judged as society, from society as bad and therefore needs to be legislated in some way generally. Yeah, and that's interesting, isn't it, when you're saying we're not functioning how society deems that we should be able to function, mm -hmm. when from God's perspective, any kind of reliance on any of these things, emotional, physical or substances, means that we're not functioning in the optimal way. Anyway, we're using Correct. a substance, a, a, a habit, an emotion a habit. to yeah. function. Yep. And that in itself is saying, there's a big problem. Yes. Yeah. So if we look at these three, basically the first one was emotional. Yeah. And that's, you can see that it's all to do with the relationships that you engage in mm -hmm. generally. Mm -hmm. The second one is physical and that's yep. all to do with the habits you have. Yes. And the third one is, is substance based substances. And that's all to do with the physical uh, substances that you are addicted to. Yeah. Right? And all three are effective use, are effective in helping you avoid um, uh, yeah, underlying painful emotions. But I'd like to point out something else about all three. Yeah. Some of them do it more easily than others. 
Uh -huh. So for example, if you find that a substance is useful in denying an emotion, you will probably use that substance rather than trying to get a person to help you with their emotion. Yes. The reason why is that manipulating a person <laughs> to help you emotionally is harder than just getting the substance. <laughs> yeah. And so generally we'll be attracted to the substance more than we will be to the emotional addiction mm -hmm. associated. Right. Yeah. And it depends a lot on our experience, doesn't it? It does. When it does. these emotions were formed and we started suppressing them. Yes. Because in some situations, in some families perhaps, there's not as much substance as available, but there's a very compliant, uh, or like a parent who wants to create a codependence with their Correct. child. Correct. So and that so will be our, um, our, our drug preferred of choice. jug of choice. <laughs> the yeah. emotional um, fulfill or yes. suppression. And, Something that you've got in the notes here that we, the word we haven't mentioned is that it's a reliance. Yes. And that's, that's a good word, to, isn't it? It's yes. an emotional reliance on, yes. uh, to suppress. That's use, we're relying emotionally on something to suppress other things. Correct. Or we're relying physically on it. But Correct. that reliance is that we, we're leaning on it, we're needing it we to need it. suppress those yes. things. Yeah. And in fact, for most of us, we need it so much that when it's taken away, we're very annoyed yes. <laughs> when it's taken yeah. away. And that doesn't matter whether it's an emotional one, a physical one, or a substance one. Yeah. <laughs> and just one other thought that occurred to me at, while you were speaking was about the emotional um, addictions. Mm -hmm. You mentioned relationships. We commonly think about that in terms of relationships with people still on earth. Yes. But it's very possible to have these emotional addictions with spirits as of well, course. isn't it? Yeah. Of course. And in fact, many spirits are involved in all three of these particular yeah. things. Yeah. The spirits are involved in the emotional one because they want the same emotions and they find that wherever they live in the spirit world, they can't get them. So they return back to earth wanting those particular mm -hmm. emotions mm -hmm. from other people on earth. This is if they're not developed in love themselves. Correct. If they've still and of course, you'd only ever engage in any addictions if you're not developed in love. Yes. And so that basically, I've just condemned the entire world <laughs> at this point because <laughs> uh, uh, we're heavily with addictions. Yes. which means that we're not very developed in love. And I think you can pretty much see from what is happening in, on the earth that yes, we're definitely not very developed in love yeah. when it comes, to, uh, and therefore we're very heavily involved in our addictions. Yeah. But uh, the first one, yeah, the emotional one, the spirits are often very heavily involved in that yeah. because every time we have an emotional openness to having something be fed, there is a spirit who wants to feed that addiction as long as we're willing to give them something in return. So, mm. so it's just the same kind of relationship as we have developed with other people on earth, with the exception we just can't see the person who's supplying the emotion. Yeah. That's the only exception. Yeah. The second thing with physical in situations, often spirits after they've passed no longer can have the same physical situations. Yeah. And so they, they visit people on earth and encourage them to engage in the same physical situation so that they can have the same experience yes. emotionally. Yeah. So, you know, they often are involved in that. And then spirits are heavily involved in substance abuse. Mm -hmm. The main reason why is because they can't get those substances in the spirit world. Yeah. And so what they do is they overcloak a person on earth who's willing to imbibe these substances to the point where, where they can share the results of the substances with another person. Mm -hmm. So in other words, the person on earth will finish up passing out even, and yet the spirit will still be able to feel the results of the substance through connecting energetically to the person. Yeah. So spirits are heavily involved in all three aspects of our addictions. And uh, what I was meaning to say earlier was that these, this is not all spirits globally, it's just spirits who wish to engage addictions themselves so of course. they haven't progressed very far after they've passed yeah which so. is a good 21 billion spirits yes. or so yes, yes so it's still a lot of them <laughs> yeah. yes, <laughs> so yes. there's a lot there's three times the amount of people than the amount of people on earth spirits who wish to engage in these activities Absolutely. So, so at the end of the day um yeah you, you know it's highly unlikely that a person experiencing one of these addictions doesn't have at least one spirit with them who's mm -hmm. also encouraging them to meet these addictions to meet the addictions yeah yeah okay yeah. great so basically uh addictions are there we rely on them in order to suppress uh our painful emotions our painful emotions fear grief yeah. shame and it's not just suppress it's in a way of denying Sorry. that we even have one yes it's a way of resisting the feeling of one yes it's a way of suppressing the feeling of one 
or it's a way of substituting the feeling of one. So, you know, sometimes our grief is so strong and we know it's there, but we want to have a more pleasurable feeling. So, yeah. so we'd go and get drunk instead. Yes. Uh, you know, we know we're sad, but we just don't want to feel it. Uh -huh. And so we're conscious, we're not in denial, we're not in resistance of the emotion because we find it's too hard to resist anymore. Yeah. And we're trying to suppress it, but, it's, uh, but we find the only thing is substitution yes. that works. So we could be doing any of those four techniques. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, great. No worries. <laughs>